Hi guys, it's July 9th and I just wanted to do a really quick, we finally fixed our freeze dryer. So I'm super excited about it and we learned a lot of lessons. So this is a video kind of documenting the lessons that we learned. So what we had is the, the we couldn't get a deep vacuum. We could get down to 950 millitors and we couldn't get below that. And it's supposed to get to like, you know, 300, 200, that kind of thing. And we couldn't get down. So it wouldn't, the pump would turn off and we couldn't, we couldn't get through a whole entire freeze dry process. So we have learned a lot. We've learned how to take apart our freeze dryer, which is still taken apart. Um, so when you have a leak with your freeze dryer, there's a bunch of places that you get to check to see what's going on. And I'm just kind of run through them real quick. You have this elbow here for the vacuum hose that comes up into the drum and there's an o-ring inside this elbow so we had to take that apart we replaced the o-ring um you have the actual vacuum hose so these are only supposed to be hand tight there's o-rings in there too but there's also these crimps and we got this self-fusing silicone tape to try to help reduce any kind of problems here and you have the other end going into the pump um, the other issue is where the drain comes into the drum and this is a connector piece that Harvest Right no longer uses but we did not know that so when they sent us the new hose and it had the female end instead of the male end on the original piece we got very confused so <laughs> this is actually the old hose but we have since learned that we'll Eventually, we can take this piece off um, to reduce another. Um, so it's dripping right now because I actually ran the freeze dryer and it is defrosting. Um, so we've got this hose, same thing. You got the crimps on either end, the stopcock. So our problem actually ended up being the original problem ended up being the stopcock. It, it actually rusted on the inside, and then the uh, valve, the turning. The thing that you turn got too loose um it started to not it just couldn't shut it all the way so this was our original problem but when we um when we replaced this hose we actually created another problem on this and we didn't realize we just thought that we never identified what the problem was but we fixed a problem and created a problem and it took us a while to figure that out um and then Another potential pro place that you can have a problem is where this epoxy seal is. And we ended up putting tape around it and with Harvest Right told us to, to use 100% silicone and we just filled that up while the vacuum was on um, to, to eliminate that being a problem. And <clears throat> are there any other, did I, did I leave, are there any other potential hose no. leak problems the other issue could potentially be the gasket on the front but we weren't having problems with our gasket the gasket was fine um where the the door is and the way that we figured figured it out is you you do a test run on it with the vacuum and you end up you spray it and they told us to use the carburetor cleaner on it and you spray in these potential joint areas and as you watch the millitors, if the millitors start to go up, like significantly, like 20 millitors, then you know that you have a potential leak in that spot. So that's the way that you identify that you have a leak. Um, at first, we couldn't really pinpoint because we fixed the problem and created another problem. We just really couldn't figure it out. So we thought it was the pump. And we have the oil-free pump, which we found out since then that it does need to have tip seals and bearings plate replaced from time to time. And we did not know that. Um, so we thought it was the pump at one point. And then we met a wonderful couple came in and Carl uh, was very kind to offer us his backup pump that he had for his harvest right to help us identify the problem. So we knew that this pump worked and once we figured out that we still couldn't get down to pressure, then we knew it was not our pump and that it was actually the freeze dryer. So we redoubled our efforts on dealing with the freeze dryer. So it took a while, 
the biggest thing when you're dealing with harvest right is you call customer service and they you, they add, you set up an appointment with somebody who's going to talk to you. The important thing, my, my biggest advice to you is when you set up that appointment, set up another appointment the next day for like the same time if you can. Because what's going to happen is, is you're going to troubleshoot and you're going to have to do something and then you're going to have to recontact them and say, this is what I found out and they're not going to talk to you because you don't have an appointment and you got to make an appointment and a week goes by and you're troubleshooting every single step of the way and then all this time goes by and and it becomes very it becomes a long drawn out process but you can avoid that by creating by t making multiple appointments at a time that is my biggest advice for you so we've learned a lot of lessons here and i wrote some of them down so one big lesson is your emergency is not Harvest Right's emergency. <laughs> so because my business plan was built around a freeze dryer and I had no backup, it became an emergency for me not to, um, for this not to go down. And right in the middle of fruit season and it was panic, pure panic mode. And it was an emergency to me, but that does not make it an emergency for Harvest Right. That is on me. That is not on them. So big lesson learned is we're gonna get, we're gonna go ahead and purchase a, a backup pump. And that way we'll, that'll, we now, and then one of the major pro things that we've learned is how to take this pump apart. I mean, how to take the freeze dryer apart and how to identify where there's problems and how to fix it. We're not afraid of it anymore. I mean, we've got boards exposed and you know, it's kind of crazy town. So we're good there. Um, we're gonna have a backup pump. So those are very, very positive things. And one of the huge positive things was, was meeting the couple that came to our rescue. Uh, they are local Harvest Right owners. So now we have a community they run into problems, we'll be able to help them. And as a matter of fact, if you're in the Richmond area, um, we are here. And if you run into problems with your Harvest Right, give us a shout. Email foreverfoodsfarm.com and at gmail.com. And we will do our best to put our heads together and kind of help you get through it. Um, I'm not their technical support or anything, but we have learned a lot. So we might have some something to offer. Um, yeah, so that's it. Do you have anything else to add? No. Let me look at my little, my little sheet real quick. Yeah. No, I just, uh, I'm super excited that it's running again. Yay!